Hey everybody, Melon here. Welcome back to another episode of Teardown. Today we are going to be tearing down the T-Volution Terra Pro. Now the Terra, as I talked about my full review for this being T-Volution's first mouse, is quite impressive as the mouse feels great. There are some small build quality related issues as the pilot holes on these base screws does strip very easily. And there's also that clip towards the back of the mouse that breaks really quickly as well. But the mouse does feel really good and it is using a unique split PCB design that we have seen before. So the main clicks here in the scroll wheel are on a separate PCB from the main board, kind of like how the side buttons are also on their separate PCB. But unlike a lot of other brands who've done this split PCB design, the ribbon cables for these secondary PCBs are very long, not super short like they commonly are. So the Terra is actually very serviceable despite its unique build. So in today's episode of Teardown, we'll show you how to fully disassemble and reassemble the Terra, as well as talk about the onboard specs, the component weights and modding possibilities and much, much more. But as always, before we get into it, you will need a couple things. Firstly, having a set of precision screwdriver bits will be very helpful. Now all the screws inside the Terra are just standard Phillips heads but they do vary in size slightly so having some smaller bits will make this tear down much easier. Having something to keep track of your screws like an ice cube tray or a magnetic mac is also highly advisable as this will help you from confusing the screws to make sure you put it back together. And lastly having something like a mat or a microfiber cloth just to keep your mouse in place as you do your tear down is also highly advisable. But once you have all that you are ready to go ahead and tear down the T-Volution Terra so let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, now to get started, first thing you're gonna have to do is remove your stock skates, which is very easy as there are the skate removal ramps here and here. Now, unfortunately, the stock skates do peel pretty easily and warp when you take them off, so you most likely won't be able to reuse them. But since the Terra comes with extra sets of aftermarket skates, you can just replace them with a new set. Now, once you have the screws off, we're gonna go ahead and remove the base screws, which are here, 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 and here. But keep in mind, if your pilot holes for these screws are stripped, they most likely won't come out and they'll fall out later in this video. So just make sure they're all loose and take out whatever ones you can. All right, and then with those screws removed, make a little pincer with your hand and just put pressure on the sides of the back shell like this and you'll notice how the back will kind of pop open like that. And then you can take a fingernail or a pry bar and run it along the sides of the shell to disconnect it. Now the primary clip locations are here. There's one here and there's also the one towards the back here that will most likely snap when you take the unit apart, but don't worry about that too much. And also when you do disconnect the top shells, the other screws will most likely fall out. So make sure you collect those and put them off to the side. Now, once you get these off, go ahead and just gently pull the shells apart. And you can see on the middle here, there are a bunch of ribbon cables. Now these are just fairly standard ribbon cables. So nothing too crazy to do with here. Just reach in and just gently pull up the sides of the connector and gently pull the cable out and we'll do the same thing for this one here. Just like that. Again, just be very careful because these ribbon cables are historically very fragile. And with that, that is how you disassemble the top and the base shell here for the Terra. Let's go ahead and put the base off to the side for now. We'll focus on the top shell first. All right, now the top shell's disassembly is pretty straightforward, which is nice to see. Firstly, we're gonna go ahead and remove the daughter board here, which controls the main clicks and the scroll wheel, and of course the scroll wheel click, and we can remove that by removing these screws here, 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 and here. All right, and then with those screws removed, just go ahead and grab this PCB and pull it straight up. And as you can see, it's held in by these pilot holes for the bottom shell here. So just gently pull it straight up, kind of like what you would with a scroll wheel. And with a little bit of fidgeting, you should be able to pull it off just like that. And there is your daughter board for the main clicks, the scroll wheel click, and of course the scroll wheel itself. And next we can go ahead and remove our side button PCB. We can do that by removing a screw from here and a screw from here. And once those screws are removed, you can just gently pull up on the side of this PCB to pull it out in one piece. And there is the daughter board for the side buttons. We'll put that off to the side. And then next up, we can go ahead and remove these side buttons here, which as I mentioned in my full review are these gigantic side buttons that actually are extremely comfortable. And to remove these, go ahead and put two fingers on the outside of the shell to push them into place. And then what you wanna do is you wanna get a fingernail, kind of under, or a screwdriver, I guess, under this little section here and pull up just like that. And then the exact same situation on the top here. And you can pull the side buttons out in one solid piece, just like that. And lastly, we have the main clicks here, which are very easy to remove as well. We can first go ahead and remove a screw from here and a screw from here. And then once those screws are removed, as usual for main clicks, just get a finger underneath the back and pull up and the clicks will fall out of the shell. And same situation for this one. And the main clicks will just pop out of the shell just like that. And you can put those off to the side as well. And with the main clicks removed, that is everything for the top shell here. A very simple disassembly process or replacing components is going to be very easy, which is great to see. We'll put the top shell off to the side for now. And now we can focus on the base shell. 
All right, now since the board uses a split PCB design, the main board here is a lot simpler than we see on a lot of other mice, which does make this disassembly process very easy. Now, the first thing we have to do here is we disconnect the battery, and we can do this by just grabbing the sides of this JST connector and just wiggling it out from the top, and with enough pressure, you should be able to pop it off just like that. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and remove the main board itself by removing a screw from here, a screw from here, and a screw from here. And then with those screws removed, we can just gently pick up the board from the back here, just disconnecting it off of these two standoffs, and we can pull the board out at an angle. Just be very gentle with it, and don't force the board out if it doesn't want to come out. And there is the main board off in one piece. Again, a very simple main board compared to a lot of the other ones we've seen, but again, because of the split PCB design, this one is much lighter and also much easier to construct. And then lastly on the base shell, we do have a little slider switch here, which controls the mouse's connectivity types, and that will most likely come off when you flip the unit over, so we'll put that off to the side as well. And then there is the battery here. Now the battery is held in by a piece of adhesive on the bottom here. Now you can take this off if you want to mod it out for a larger battery as you can just kind of mill out this little bit of piece of plastic here and put a longer, larger battery here. But for the sake of this teardown, because I want the mouse to be operational after, I'm not going to take this off. But if you do take this off, make sure you dissolve the adhesive with some alcohol and then use a large pry tool. Kind of similar to this, but a little longer to remove the battery. Do not use a screwdriver or anything sharp because if you puncture the battery, it will cause a fire. All right, and with with that, that is everything you have to take apart for the base shell of the Terra. We'll put that off to the side for now. And now we can go ahead and talk about the board's components. Starting off for our components, we have the daughter board here, which has the two Wano black shell white dot switches on them. Again, this is a very overused switch. We see this on a lot of mice nowadays, but it does work well in combination with the main clicks and makes the main clicks on the mouse feel quite balanced. So I am happy to see them here despite their overused nature. We also have this unique daughter board here, which controls the main clicks and the scroll wheel. And as I talked about in my full review, we have the FE optical switches here. And these are the same ones we saw used in the Pulsar X2 Crazy Light, which I'm very happy to see here again as they feel really good. We have our F-Switch 11S pink encoder here, which gives the wheel a really loose feeling. Again, I would much rather see a more tensioned encoder here, but I mean, that is what it is. And also for the scroll wheel click, we have a kale pillar switch here with a cyan topper, as you can see there. And that gives the scroll wheel click a decent feeling. Again, scroll wheel clicks that use pillar switches always feel kind of muddy, but that is what it is. And you can remove the scroll wheel quite easily by just grabbing the scroll wheel and pulling to the right, and the scroll wheel will pop off of this daughter board. So it's very easy to service or mod this out for a different kind of scroll wheel if you want to, which it's great to see. And lastly, on the main board, we have our PAW 3950 Strike, which is to say Re9 Pixar PAW 3950, and we have our Nordic 52840 MCU there. All right, well, that's everything for components and specs. Let's go ahead and talk about component weights next. All right, now in terms of component weights, before I measure the individual components, I wanted to quickly clarify. Now, T-Volution is advertising that the Terra will weigh 49 plus minus two grams, but as I talked about in my full review, the mouse is actually a little heavier than that, weighing 50 grams with no skates, 50.7 grams with the X8 dot skates, and with the full-size honeycomb or flat PTFE skates, the unit weighs 51.3 grams. So again, it is outside the advertised weight spec, but this 51.3 gram weight is still very impressive for a mouse of this size. Starting off, we have the top shell here with everything removed, which weighs around 14 grams. Next, we have the base shell with the 250 milliamp hour battery still installed, which weighs around 13 grams. Now this battery probably accounts for around four to five grams of that. So if you mod this out for a smaller capacity or a heavier battery, of course, it's going to affect the overall weight of this base part here. Next, we have the two main clicks, which collectively weigh 5.4 grams. The side buttons, which weigh 1.7 grams. We have our side click PCB with its ribbon cable, which weighs 2.3 grams. We have the main board, which weighs 6.2 grams. We have the main click scroll wheel PCB, which weighs 4.2 grams with the ribbon cable. The scroll wheel and the bottom slider button to control the connectivity types on the Terra weighs collectively 2 grams. And all the screws inside the Terra collectively weigh up to be 1.6 grams. All right, well, now that we've talked about component weights and specs here, let's go ahead and start our reassembly process, starting off with the base. Now, the first thing we have to do here is put back in this little slider control that connects the connectivity types here on the Terra, and that is going to slot into this little slot right here. Now, this is bi-directional, so it doesn't matter what way you put it in, which is nice to see, and you can just slot it into this little slider here, just like that. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to put it into the back position here, so it should sit just like this, because on the bottom of the main board here, there is a control switch, as 
as you can see here. And because of this, you do need to be very careful how this button is positioned, because if this is in the top position and this is in the bottom position like that, when you try and put the main board back in here, you have the potential to damage this switch, which would render your unit inoperable. So it's very important you match the location of this switch to this little slider here. And as such, we're going to put it into the bottom most orientation, as I talked about earlier. And we're also going to do the same with this switch here. So make sure it's in the bottom most orientation, just like that. And then once you've verified both of these switches are in the same orientation, we can go ahead and put the main board back onto the base shell here by just sliding it on top here, just like this. And with a little bit of finicking, you should be able to get it into place just like that. Now, once it clicks in, you should feel a little bit of a click and you can verify that the board is sitting flat because the little standoffs for the board are flush with the PCB. Now, once it's in, put your finger on the top here and flip the mouse over and just verify that this connectivity switch still works. If it doesn't work, reseed the board and again, make sure the orientation of the switch and the bottom slider is correct. All right, now that you've verified everything is done, go ahead and put the mouse's base onto a flat surface. You can go ahead and re-anchor the main board by putting a screw here, here, and here, but make sure not to over-tension the screw because you can warp the base if you over-tension the base screws. So just be very careful when putting them in. So once those screws are in, verify that your mouse's base is flat, it doesn't have any tilting to it. And if it's flat, you're good to go ahead to the next step, which will be reconnecting the battery, which is very easy to do. All we do is thread this into this JST plug, get it into place roughly like that, and then just take two of your fingers on the side and push it into place just like that. And with that, that is everything for the base shell. It is a very easy reassembly process, which is great to see. Let's go ahead and put that off to the side for now, and we'll talk about the top shell next. All right, and then in terms of the top shell, despite the split PCB design, the reassembly process is actually quite easy here. Now, firstly, we're gonna go ahead and flip the unit over and we're going to go ahead and re-anchor in our main clicks, which is quite easy to do. All you do is take the click and feed it into the top shell, kind of like this, and you can see how it's sticking out from the bottom. And you wanna kind of flatten it out and you want to line up these little stabilizers right here with this little ridge right here. And then of course, this is gonna go over this little foam pad here. So in through the bottom, up and over, and then once it's kind of in place, push the click in just like that, and then you can just take your thumb and press it into place just like that. And then we'll do the same process for the next click, in through the bottom, up and over, make sure you line up the stabilizers, and once it's in place, just like that, press your thumb down and anchor those into place. And then once that's done, you can go ahead and re-anchor the anchoring screw that goes here and here. But as always with main clicks, make sure you don't over-tension these screws because if you over-tension the clicks, you will break them and cause them to not actuate. And if they're under-tensioned, the main clicks will feel a little loose like that. So make sure not to over-tension these screws and screw them in until you feel a little bit of feedback from the screw itself. All right, and then once that's done, flip your unit over and look on the top and make sure your main clicks kind of have this like natural buoyancy to them like this. If the clicks sit flat down like this, they've been under tension. If they're kind of stiff up here and you can't actuate them, they've been over tensioned. So again, just make sure you screw these screws in until you feel a little bit of feedback from the screw. Next up, we can go ahead and reinstall our side buttons, which is very easy to do. All we do is just kind of roughly put them into the place on the side of the shell and see these little lips up at the top here. You want to put this piece into its little slot there, kind of like that. And the same deal for this piece here. You you have to lift it up and over and kind of bend it a little bit to get it into place but it should go into place just like that. And you can just double check to make sure the side buttons are in properly and make sure they still actuate before you go forward. And with that, that's everything for the top shelf. So we'll put that off to the side for now. And now we can talk about the daughter boards. Now the daughter board reassembly is going to be pretty straightforward here. All we have to do is re-anchor the scroll wheel, which is really easy as all you do is take the thin end of this wheel and you want to put it into this little hole in the encoder. So just kind of line it up as best you can and gently just push it into place and it should sit just like this. And just make sure the scroll wheel still works and make sure you can still scroll wheel click. If it feels a little loose, just push it into the encoder a little more. Now that that's assembled, we can go ahead and go back to the top shell here and we can go ahead and re-anchor our side button PCB. Now this is going to be pretty easy to do again, as expected. All you have to do is line the board up with the little holes here on its two standoffs, which are here and here. It's best to kind of put the board in at an angle I find as it sits a little weird with the side buttons, but with a little bit of fidgeting, you should be able to get it into place just like that. And you can make sure it's sitting flat as the plastic will be flush with the surface of the PCB. And once that's done, you can go ahead and put back in the two anchoring screws that go here and here to re-anchor them. 
All right, and then once those screws are anchored in, go ahead and flip the unit onto its side and just verify that your side buttons are clicking and they feel normal. If they feel weirdly tensioned, re-anchor the buttons themselves because they may not be sitting properly, but if you did exactly what I did, they should feel okay. And then lastly, we can go ahead and re-anchor the daughter board for the main clicks and the scroll wheel, which is quite easy to do. And how you're gonna do this is see these two larger holes towards the front of the shell here. Those are going to correspond with these two little standoffs here and here. So basically all you have to do is take the board and kind of put it loosely into place and you may have to fidget it with a little bit, but see how it just kind of naturally slotted onto that? That's exactly how it should go on just like that. And then you may need to fidget it a little bit around just to make sure it sits onto the other standoffs properly because it can be a little finicky sometimes here. It's also really important not to click the main clicks when you do this because if you push the main clicks, you'll push the board out. So you have to do this without touching the main clicks, which can be kind of tricky. But once you get it roughly into place like that, you can see how the plastic is kind of even with the height of the PCB there as expected. You can go ahead and re-anchor these screws, which go here, 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 and here. Now with all the screws installed, make sure to give them another quick extra tension check because sometimes the board doesn't sit completely flat when you put it in yourself and it actually sits properly when you screw it in. So just check all the tensioning on the screws and make sure they're all firmly snug inside the top shell here. And then after you've checked all these screws here, make sure your main clicks still function properly. So just double check their actuation, make sure your scroll wheel still scrolls and make sure your scroll wheel click still works as well. All right, and with that, that is everything for the top shell here. So we can go ahead and grab our base shell and put the unit back together. All right, now to connect the top shells, the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and deal with this larger cable first because it is the smaller and the more rigid one, so it's a little harder to put in. Now, firstly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make sure this is in the open position, so just like that, and the cable is gonna go into that little slot here. So grab the top shell and kind of angle it over as best as you can, and you wanna put the cable into the encoder like this, and we have to just push it into place just like that. Now the problem is that because the cable is so short and it's a little rigid, it'll probably pop out. So you do have to be kind of careful when doing this, but you want the cable to sit roughly flat like that. And once it's sitting flat, you can go ahead and push down the sides just like that. And that should anchor it into place. And then next up, we can go ahead and deal with our smaller one, which again is a little tricky now that we have to deal with this top cable. So put the shells kind of like this, make sure it's in the open position as well. And then just do the exact same process with this little one here. It's a little easier to work with because it's so small. And once it's in place like that, just clip the shells together just like that. Now that you've got the ribbon cables and you've ensured they're connected properly, go ahead and flick your unit on and make sure that everything is working. So check your side buttons to make sure they're still functional, check your main clicks, check your scroll wheel, check your scroll wheel click, and make sure this indicator LED turns on. If it doesn't turn on, most likely the ribbon cable isn't seated properly, so you have to reseat it. But if you did it correctly and it's sitting flat like I showed you, it should be connected properly. And then once you've verified everything is working, you can go ahead and turn the unit back off. And then you can go ahead and reconnect the top and the bottom shells by putting them roughly together right about like this and you just want to gently push it into place to see how the front is kind of lined up there and then you just want to push on the sides like that make sure you push on the back and then just run your thumb along the side to make sure everything is connected properly and then you can go ahead and re-anchor the four base screws that go here 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 and here but as i mentioned earlier because the pilot holes are plastic and they're very thin it's very easy to damage these so kind of treat these similar to the main click screws where you don't want to over tension them but you want them to be snug because if you over tension them, you will split the pilot holes for these screws so be very careful when putting these back in All right, and then with those base screws reconnected, you can go ahead and put back on your preferred set of skates, and that is how you tear down the T-Volution Terra. Overall, the unit is actually very serviceable. I know the ribbon cables are a little finicky and they can be kind of hard to work with. If you have smaller hands than mine, they'll be much easier to work with because I have really big hands, so it's kind of hard for me. But it is definitely the best split PCB implementation I've seen on a mouse to date, as unlike a lot of other mice, this mouse is actually serviceable, which is great to see. And the split PCB layout does make it very easy for long-term repairability, as if one of your main clicks or your scroll wheel breaks or something like that, you can just replace the daughter board, not the whole PCB, which is a great attention to detail. But with that, that's everything for today's episode of Teardown. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks again to T-Volution for sending over the Terra for review. I greatly appreciate it. If you did miss my full review of this mouse, be sure to go check it out. I do talk about all the pros and cons of this mouse and how T-Volution can improve this mouse for the future. But again, as I mentioned earlier, overall, it is a very, very solid release. One of the best mice we've seen this year. Big thank you to all of our channel members who make what I do here on the channel possible. If you enjoy what I do here on the channel, 
channel and you would like to support what I do here, you can use code MELON with a zero over at Lethal Gaming Gear, Mech Keys, and Potent Gaming, or consider becoming a member here on YouTube for as low as $2 a month, and that is one of the best ways to directly support my efforts here on the channel. But that's everything for today's episode of Teardown. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next episode of Teardown. Peace.